everybody, Sven Diesel here. We're going to be tying what I call the 60 second caddis. It literally doesn't take 60 seconds, but it's simplifying a caddis pattern I found to be super effective. We're going to start with a stealth hook. This is one of their D series in a size 14. I typically fish these in sometimes 12s, but 14s, 16s, and 18s are my go to's. And I'm just going to use some tan thread here to kind of match. I'll often use a hot spot thread like an orange or a red. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my thread a little bit back from the eye. I'm going to proceed down a quarter of the shank and then work my way back up to our tie-in point. And then I'll reverse and go back down again and this time go a little bit further, maybe, I don't know, a quarter more. Stop, advance back up. What we're doing is we're building the taper of this caddis um, so that we can uh, just basically tie in our body material and then wrap it up and then we'll be done. So what we did is a slight taper. For the body we're using straggle string. This is the color olive. I'm going to cut off about a four inch piece here. And this is taking the place of what you typically use on a caddis. Um, some of your peacock or hackle. This stuff's super awesome, super durable. And I tie it in with a little tag end off the front and then wrap it back over itself. And what we did there, if you can see it, we've created a little bit of a step. There is no taper right there behind the eye. I've got a little bit of space of exposed shank. But what we did is we created a step and that helps uh, later in the process of tying this in. And so I tied that straggle string down a little bit further than I did my previous taper. And then I'll end with my thread right there in front of the step. Now I start wrapping backwards. Um, this helps with the taper of the body and then I do about two wraps back and then I kind of hop up and over and then I'm going to use touching wraps pretty much all the way up to that stepping point. And this straggle string you can see I'm just wrapping it as quickly as I can. If you've got a rotary function on your vise you could you know, do a half hitch with your thread and then spin it. But I like to kind of, if I was going to be really super particular with this, I'd preen a lot of these uh, fibers back as, I, as I'm going. But I found it doesn't really matter. It's not necessary. It's, it's buggy enough as is. You've got uh, quite a buggy body here. And I use this olive quite a bit. I use peacock and I also use one of the uh, orange colors. And then as I get up here towards the step, as soon as I go down, I'm going to tie off that straggle string. And I know that my body is super durable and super buggy. And I'll go ahead and trim that out with a few wraps. Now we need to be a little bit mindful here of our thread wraps, but I want to make sure that we get that straggle binded down pretty good. It looks really good. And the next step is I'm going to tie in two uh, premium CDC feathers. These are trout hunters. Sometimes you get a really nice one like that's big and I save those for other flies and sometimes they got some that are a little wispy. We don't need super big uh, feathers for this, but I like to tie in two. So you can see right here we got two perfect feathers. They've got a little bit of fluff on the end. They're not super big. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of line them up. They don't have to be exact matches. You could be as OCD as you want about that. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to trim out um, a major portion of that stem in the tip. And then I'll stack them right on top of each other. And if it has a significant curve to it, um, you want to be mindful of that. But these ones here are pretty flat, pretty natural. And sometimes I like the curve down. Sometimes I like the curve up. Um, sometimes I mix and match them so the curve offsets each other so they go straight back. But I just measure it so that a little bit of those fibers extend past the hook shank. And then I'll tie it in with two wraps. And like I said, we need to be mindful of our wraps at this point. I'll check the length. That looks pretty good. I'll pull it up and then I'll do some wraps to really trap that uh, CDC in there. And then I'll inspect it. I like where it's at. I'll go ahead and trim this out. Being careful at this point not to pull on that CDC. I'm pretty confident in how we trapped it, but I'll just make sure it's fanning into a triangle going back. I want it to go off to the sides and have the bulk of it be in the center, of course, but um, I want it to lay underneath the wing, the entire um, wing that we're going to be doing. Now for the wing here, we're using some elk hair. This is a C, uh, Select Cow by Nature Spirit, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off a clump here. I'm going to grab it by the tips, and I'm going to pull out all the fluff and small fibers. You could be um, you could use a comb, but when I'm tying these really, really fast, I found that this Select Cow um, uh, patch of hair is really, really clean anyway. And then we'll go ahead and put it in our hair stacker once we've got all the under fluff and smaller um, hairs removed. I'll go ahead and stack it with a few taps on my bench. And then all I'm going to do is I really love this stacker because I can pull them out super easy. And then I'll switch hands 
place it so that if I was to lay this down flat against the shank, it would go a little bit past the bend. So that CDC, some of those fibers are extending out beyond, but a bulk of it is underneath the wing. And then I'll do two wraps, uh, not super tight, but then I'll crank up as I come around. And you can see how it flared it just a little bit. This hair is awesome for this. And then I'll make sure that all my butt ends are kind of on the top of the shank, I'll pull about a third or a quarter of the hairs back. I'll wrap up and over. And if you trap a few hairs, it doesn't matter, but um, try to avoid that. And then I'll wrap up and over another um, third or quarter. And then I will make sure to get some really nice wraps right here in front. This is what will push that elk hair in the, the butt ends up so that we can easily tie this on. So you can see. There we go. I secured that uh, elk hair in sections so that it's it's trapped. I've found that to be super effective. It also helps when we're cutting this to form a really, really nice taper. So I'll just fan them out, kind of pinch them in my hand, and then just cut it at an upward degree. Um, you only get really one try. You can come in and try and fan that a little bit better, but um, I found it's easier just to get it right the first time. And then I'll go ahead and do a whip finish right over the top of this. And then as I, as I do a three turn whip finish, I'm going to one first inspect the fly to make sure that uh, we've got a really good fan. And uh, there we go, I like it. I'll cut my thread out. Now this is the last step of this quick bug. I'm gonna take a little bit of a, uh, a thin Solarez bone dry I found to be really good. You could use a head cement. Uh, you could even uh, put some other sort of uh, uh, thin uh, resins on there, but you want it to penetrate into the core of that. Um, I've also found that sometimes I even put a little bit of dubbing here, but uh, when I'm cranking these out, I don't think it has mattered too much uh, with the effectiveness of this fly. And so I just brush a little bit of resin all the way around there, let it soak in. And then the key here is I make sure my eye is uh, clear. Um, it takes an extra second or two but I really, really think that this is an important step to make sure that eye is free of resin and then I leave it in there. As I cure it, I'm kind of wiggling it so that um, when I'm on the river, it's windy, it's cold, I know that that eye is not buggered up with resin. I don't have to pick it out with my nips or whatever. So um, that looks really, really good. And as you can see, the key to this is that fan. Um, you want it to be a triangle going back to the bend of the hook. Um, this has got the CDC, it's got elk hair, it's going to float for days. The body is super durable with that CDC or with that straggle string. Um, all these materials come in a bunch of different colors. Uh, I love this hook and uh, this has simply caught fish for me. And you can see how this uh, straggle string has some really, really unique properties with that flash. So tie some up, hope they catch fish. Mm -hmm.